Hello, my name is Meena Singh and I'm a Yorta Yorta woman and I am the Commissioner for Aboriginal Children and Young People. This is a brief overview of Standard 1. I encourage you to also look at the Commission's online resources for more information and in-depth guidance. If you have a co-regulator, please also refer to their guidance on how to comply with this standard. Under Standard 1, organisations need to establish a culturally safe environment in which the diverse and unique identities and experiences of Aboriginal children and young people are valued and respected. Just like with every child, your organisation needs to ensure that Aboriginal children feel safe and are safe when participating in your organisation. Historically, Aboriginal people and community have been excluded from participating fully in all aspects of community. While legal barriers have been removed, there can still be attitudes, biases and practices that make Aboriginal people feel unsafe in some environments. Achieving cultural safety involves thinking about how an organisation is viewed and experienced by Aboriginal children, their families and other members of the community. A culturally safe environment is one that supports Aboriginal children to feel proud of their identity and culture so they feel safe to speak up if something happens to them. Your organisation needs to take specific steps to create a culturally safe environment for Aboriginal children. Organisations must provide supportive environments for Aboriginal children that recognise each person is unique with their own characteristics, strengths and challenges. It is your responsibility to make sure your organisation is inclusive and this requires education, reflection and positive action. Child Safe Standard 1 is required for all organisations. You may have Aboriginal children and families in your organisation already, but perhaps they have not shared this with you. Your work in creating a culturally safe environment will help these children and could encourage other Aboriginal community members to engage with your organisation. The best way to approach cultural safety is to think of it as a journey. It will take time, dedication and meaningful engagement with Aboriginal culture, knowledge and community. Organisations need to commit long term and take meaningful action each year to keep progressing their compliance with Standard 1. And remember, Implementing this child safe standard will not only help keep Aboriginal children and young people safe, it will expand your own understanding of Aboriginal culture, community and history. To comply with this standard, your organisation must meet the following five minimum requirements. Minimum requirement 1.1. A child's ability to express their culture and enjoy their cultural rights is encouraged and actively supported. Culture and identity are linked, and by supporting Aboriginal children to feel strong in their identity, you are also helping them enjoy their cultural rights. Being able to express their cultural identity makes Aboriginal children stronger and safer. When Aboriginal children do not feel safe to be themselves, the risk they will be abused by others increases, and it may reduce their willingness to report abuse. For a child to feel safe, they need to see supportive and encouraging responses to Aboriginal culture and identity from leaders, staff and volunteers within your organisation. They need to feel that their culture and identity is accepted and respected. Minimum Requirement 1.2 Strategies are embedded within the organisation which equip all members to acknowledge and appreciate the strengths of Aboriginal culture and understand its importance to the well-being and safety of Aboriginal children and young people. Aboriginal communities represent the oldest continuous cultures in the world with diverse languages, kinship, family structures and ways of life. Aboriginal people have demonstrated resilience and strength over thousands of years despite the challenges and adversity they have faced since colonisation. For Aboriginal people, connection to culture is a protective factor, leading to better emotional, social and physical health outcomes. It is important to provide opportunities for people in your organisation to learn and reflect on their own knowledge and attitudes about Aboriginal people. Providing a safe, respectful space for reflection and discussion is important. Celebrating the strengths of Aboriginal culture helps an organisation to be inclusive. You could participate in days and events that are important to Aboriginal people, such as NAIDOC Week and the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Children's Day. There is a wealth of information online, in books and in documentaries. Your organisation should also take the opportunity to connect with Aboriginal community and Aboriginal community controlled organisations in your area. 
Minimum Requirement 1.3. Measures are adopted by the organisation to ensure racism within the organisation is identified, confronted and not tolerated. Any instances of racism are addressed with appropriate consequences. Racism causes emotional harm that impacts on mental and physical health. Racism is harmful for children and impacts their safety and well-being. It can be a form of child abuse. Sadly, the impact of racism can be felt for years. Racism can be harassment, abuse or humiliation. It can sometimes lead to intimidation and violence. Racism includes name-calling and hurtful jokes and excluding people from groups or activities. It might be comments that seem harmless but demonstrate a lack of respect for another person. In organisations, racism may be shown through the attitudes and actions of staff, volunteers, leaders or members of your community. It can be demonstrated in policies and procedures that reflect implicit biases and assumptions. Racism can also happen because of an organisation's culture. Perhaps the organisation is not welcoming for people from different cultures or backgrounds. Racism can lead to someone removing themselves from situations or interacting with certain people because they are worried about experiencing racism. If children and their families experience racism in your organisation, they may not feel confident about raising concerns or complaints. Your organisation needs to think about how racism is called out and responded to in order to identify and respond to it. Everyone in your organisation should know that racism will not be tolerated and if it occurs, there will be clear consequences. Minimum Requirement 1.4. The organisation actively supports and facilitates participation and inclusion within it by Aboriginal children, young people and their families. Making a child's family feel welcome and included in an organisation contributes to their safety. When thinking about how to support inclusion and participation in your organisation, Remember that for Aboriginal children, culture and family go hand in hand. Preventing racism needs to extend to how families are treated so that they are encouraged to participate as well as children. Minimum Requirement 1.5 All of the organisation's policies, procedures, systems and processes together create a culturally safe and inclusive environment and meet the needs of Aboriginal children, young people and their families. Statements of support such as displaying the Aboriginal flag or having an acknowledgement of country plaque are important, but these alone will not make a child safe. All organisational policies, procedures, systems and processes need to meet the needs of Aboriginal children and their families. Your organisation's approach to creating cultural safety needs to be embedded throughout the organisation. Organisations will be at different stages of their cultural safety journey and the process is one of continuous improvement. A good place to start is to look at what your organisation already does to provide cultural safety and identify any gaps. Creating a culturally safe environment takes time, dedication and meaningful engagement. Organisations need to commit long term and take meaningful action each year to keep progressing their compliance with Standard 1. What tells you that an organisation acknowledges and respects Aboriginal culture? For me, it's when they have the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flag on display, um, when they have black staff that are in not just identify roles, but also in all roles throughout the organisation, just so that it doesn't seem like it's tokenistic. Um, and yeah, when they have acknowledgements, like something as simple as having it in their email, really does make a huge difference. How can you tell that an organisation is committed to stamping out racism? I think if they've got policies in place, um, I think as well if there's ongoing conversations happening and if there is an incident that comes up it's you know rectified immediately um, and in a respectful manner. My challenge would be for organisations to truly understand the diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, not just in a sense of who we are, but all of our different journeys that we have throughout this continent that we're in today. I challenge organisations to continue the discussion and the dialogue um, with Indigenous peoples 